I would like to talk about some of the pitfalls to avoid when designing your own convolutional neural network architecture. Let me discuss this by looking at uh, an example network architecture. Say that this is your neural network and uh, it has uh, two convolutional layers and two dense layers. And uh, say we would like to use this for something like MNIST digit classification because we have 10 neurons at the end, and then we have softmax as the last layer activation. The input images are of the dimensions 36 by 36 by 3, which means we have color images. And you've decided to add one convolutional layer with 64 filters in the first layer, and another convolutional uh, layer with four neurons in the second layer, and then a dense layer with 10 neurons, and then a dense layer with 10 neurons at the end. So for these three layers, you get to decide how many filters you want or how many neurons you want. So if I run this model, you'll see that in summary, the number of parameters in the first layer is around 1700, 1800. The second conv layer has around 2300 parameters. And then this dense layer has around 40,000 parameters. And the last sigmoid layer has 110 parameters. This means overall, this dense layer right before the second last layer is doing a lot of work, doing the heavy lifting of all that a model has to run. Instead of these 10 neurons here, if I made these neurons 100, you will see that now this layer actually has um, almost 409,000 um, parameters. So in this case, this model has a lot of capacity and this is a dense layer. So it is quite likely that you will end up overfitting because uh, since there are very few convolutional uh, filters here, in, in this case, this is not doing a whole ton of learning here, um, your, your images pass as it is after this layer, and this dense layer ends up doing most of the heavy lifting. So for this reason, um, having very few neurons in the middle layer um, creates like a bottleneck, information bottleneck for information to flow from one layer to the other. Also having so many layers of so many neurons in the middle also makes this particular layer responsible for learning most of the things that the network is supposed to learn. So for this reason, making having so many neurons in the dense layer over here is not really a good idea. Usually the dense layer that comes right after the convolutional layers, of course will have a lot of parameters because um, you'll be flattening out a volume and then feeding them to a dense layer. Um, it's also common to, uh, like, you know, if you have a really big network, then accordingly, your number of neurons in the dense layer can be big. But for a tiny network like this, having a dense layer that, say, for example, has 1,000 neurons here is actually a terrible idea. Now, also, um, since you have 64 filters here, it is actually not very common. Sometimes this might work for a particular problem but not very common to suddenly drastically jump down your number of filters to 64. So if you understand that, um, say you need fewer and fewer filters in the subsequent layers, then gradually decreasing the number of filters is a good idea. Now, if you do this, you will immediately notice that the number of neurons, uh, number of uh, parameters in the subsequent dense layer will also increase. For example, when I here only had four filters, then the number of parameters in the dense layer was uh, 440,000. And then as soon as I make this 32, then the number of parameters in the dense layer increases to 327,000 uh, parameters where this is doing most of the work now. Now this is because the volume that comes out from the previous layer becomes 32 by 32 by two. Earlier, uh, 32 by 32 by 32, whereas earlier it was only 32 by 30 by four. So if this becomes a problem, a common trick is to add, say, a max pooling layer here, a max pool layer here, or even maybe, say, um, add more convolutional layers, go from 32 to maybe um, 16, and then go to maybe 4 or 8. Then you still have the similar number of parameters in the last dense layer, um, 31,000 or so, but then uh, your network now uh, is in the shape of a pyramid, which is the kind of architecture that you usually want. Sometimes it can be like, you know, this could be 64, 
64 and then 16 which is also usually okay if you want a lot of feature representation like you know representation learning to happen in the initial layers then um, like you know you can have subsequent layers like this and then uh, uh, drop it down uh, sometimes if you need to drastically go down from many filters to very low filters that's when um, max pooling you can even use 4x4 four four max pooling if the images are uh, really big and then gradually taper down like you know sort of a, like a funnel uh, decrease the the number of parameters um, of the architecture that you're designing 